Hi there folks, I'm Jay and welcome to the first ever episode of our adventure. In this installment we get to start the channel out with a bit of a bang. How about a project involving the photography of something we were all told at some point is impossible to see? Hmm, maybe pictures of sound waves in the air? If y'all stick around we can definitely do that. No complex laboratory equipment is going to be needed, just some wood, some paracord, saw, duct tape. Well, it's off to get some materials. Let's go. Hmm. Looks straight enough to me. Oh yeah, we need a few of those. Hmm. Why would you want a finial that would set your house on fire when the sun shines through it? I don't know. And there's another one. There's some more of them. Insurance claims, anybody? And we'll see. 50 foot. 50 foot. 50 foot. Ooh. 100 feet. 50 foot it is. Ah, yes. Got everything we needed. Across here. Hmm. Best home improvement store ever. Okay, because I did not have enough space to film every segment of the assembly of this project, I'm going to cut to the completed build that will show off a few photography tricks and maybe a little science. Okay, just a few photography tricks and some fun. I'm not a scientist, just a regular Jay who likes to make things. Be sure to check out the links in the description below to a few other YouTube channels that deserve some of the credit and do a much better job of explaining the science. They also go into much more detail of how to build this project if you are interested. In a nutshell, this device makes it easy to see the differences in air density. 
The effect that makes this possible was discovered accidentally in the 17th century and was termed Schlieren, the German word for lines or streaks. Since its discovery, the Schlieren effect has been used for optical endeavors that range from the mundane to the supersonic. One common example of this technique is the imaging of shock waves coming from a bullet. What I built is a more or less modern version of the device that can be constructed relatively easily. The point source radiates light in every direction, and the light that makes it to the mirror is reflected back to the razor blade, which is mounted right next to the source. The razor blade edge divides the tiny dot of light exactly in half, and the rest of the light enters the camera. I did not have a temperature-controlled cement slab to mount it on, so I suspended the frame from the ceiling to reduce the fading effects from vibration and movement. Alright, now for the experiment. We will get to photographing sound waves in a minute, but first I need to show you what the effects look like so you can get a better idea of what to look for. Trust me, we will get there. The first image shows the ripples of warmer, less dense air rising from the back of my hand. Remember that keeping everything aligned is the primary challenge of designing and constructing a device that is made to be used in a relatively unstable environment. Here is a lighter being lit. Watch the bubble of hot air expand upwards from the top. Pretty cool, right? Here is a specially made candle that produces a rice grain sized flame to reduce the intensity of the effect. Again you can see the hot air moving upward, this time in an organized column. I'm going to turn on the loudspeaker next to the flame and this is where the experiment gets a little bit interesting. Notice that as the pitch rises to the top of the sound range, the column of hot air above the flame is suddenly disturbed. Now for the magic. Carefully watch the 2 o'clock position on the mirror, which is the upper right hand side of the circle for y'all with the digital clocks. Can you see it? Let me play it again. Catch it that time? The ripple effect that you see suddenly appear and disturb the hot air to the left is a series of sound waves that are actually visible in the air itself. Just sound waves in the air. The sound is traveling somewhere around 750 miles per hour from the speaker, so what you are actually seeing are the nodes of the standing waves made in the air by the sound passing through it. Also you can see the nodes change size and move back and forth slightly as the frequency changes. Pretty sweet, right? Totally worth it. Now for those of you who might think that the waves are just the mirror vibrating or are actually moving in the mirror itself, let me assure you that I examined that possibility very, very carefully. I never detected anything wrong with the mirror or the setup that would interfere with the results you are seeing here. So how's that? Sound waves and how it affects the warm air. Well, that's just about it for our first ever episode. I certainly hope you all enjoyed it. I had fun making it, and if you all want to see more videos, please like, share, and subscribe, and ring that bell. If you have a few minutes, drop me a few uh, lines in the comments section below. Your time and your thoughts mean a whole lot. Until next time, I'm Jay. Be safe. Have fun. See you next time. All right, now it's raining. <sighs> Time and thoughts, okay. I knew that I was missing something in there. I certainly had a whole lot of fun. Blah, 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 blah. Hmm. Seriously, leave me some comments. And if y'all could, please leave some... <laughs>